Uh, greetings and welcome to another of our sessions, our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic uh, psychiatric facility where we treat people, not necessarily diagnoses. My name is uh, Jim L. R. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by one of my colleagues. My name is Ashley from Seton Hill University, and I am the art therapy intern here. So, as we approach the end of the year, uh, the end of the year, what the, what is January 1st? What do they call that day? New Year's Day. New Year's Day. New Year's Day. And quite often on New Year's Day, what do people make? Resolutions. They make resolutions. And perhaps some of you out there may uh, go back and think of some of the res some of the resolutions that you've made in your life. What are, what are some common resolutions uh, that people make? Uh, to exercise more, lose weight, eat healthier. Maybe learn a different language. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to I'm going to learn Chinese. I'm going to lose a hundred pounds. I'm going to meet Mister or Miss Wonderful. I'm going to get a new job. I'm going to get a new house. I'm going to make a million dollars. All those type of things. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ashley, wouldn't that tell you that when somebody makes a resolution, that there's something wrong with them? There's something wrong. Yeah. If you make a resolution, doesn't that mean there's something wrong with you? Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't that? Isn't that kind of a non-validating type of thought? Oh my gosh, there's something really wrong with me. Mm -hmm. So, and how often do people follow through on resolutions realistically? <laughs> Not very often. Why would that be? Why would you think? Life. Life, absolutely. And quite often, sometimes what we do is we place unreasonable expectations on ourselves. Unreasonable expectations, either imposed by us or imposed by others. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you ever feel guilty about something? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then there's two types of guilt. Actually, there's there's healthy guilt, and then there's unhealthy guilt. Okay, healthy guilt is when you screwed up. Okay, mm -hmm. it's like when I tripped you going going up the steps. That mm -hmm. that's an, and I had to apologize to you. Yeah. Okay, and make things right. That's when I did something wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, all, quite often there's unhealthy guilt when we try to live up to the unreasonable expectations of others. Mm -hmm. So how the heck do we determine that? And that's where quite often we make those resolutions. You, how often do, in your life have you heard the you need to's, you have to's, you're going to do a, if I were you, Ashley? A lot. Almost. Mm -hmm. a lot. So many people, many people put unreasonable expectations on ourselves. Hence, we make a resolution to completely change our lives, don't we? Mm -hmm. So... What, what we do is then, rather, what we suggest is people make intentions. An intention is a determined effort to make something different, mm -hmm. to make something different. So rather than lose 100 pounds, uh, say, I want to lose 100 pounds, what do you think a, what do you think an intention might be? If somebody wanted to lose 100 pounds, what, what might not they want to put in their refrigerator, in the freezer? Junk food. Junk food. Mm -hmm. Ice cream, right? So let's set an intention that when we go to the grocery store, that we're going to look at labels and we're going to buy a little more healthily. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we, when we set an intention to lose 100 pounds, so maybe our first intention would be to buy a gym membership. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what we want to do, we want to set ourselves up into, set ourselves up into small achievable goals. Small achievable goals, and then when we have these resolutions, so uh, in the cognitive world, and these are big words. Uh, quite often, what we talk about is consonance and dissonance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so consonance is when our minds seek uh, seek equilibrium. Mm -hmm. It seeks safety. It seeks happiness. And um, so, quite often, if you'd say to someone, "Well, I in your mind you need to lose fifty pounds," and then you and you to see, and that creates a lot of dissonance, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to lose weight, you feel bad about that. There's a lot going on up upstairs. Uh, the mixer, your thinker's getting dysregulated. So what does our mind do? Our mind seeks consonants. Our mind seeks consonants by saying, "Well, I need to lose 50 pounds." However, uh, you know, my cousin Joe weighed is 75 pounds overweight, and you know what? I went to the doctor and I had a good checkup. My blood work was fine. Uh, my heart's good, and everything seems to be getting along very nicely. So, or or let's say Red Bull, for mm -hmm. example. Okay, you'd say to yourself, "I need to stop drinking Red Bull. I read that label, and it's all poison." 
and then your mind starts to think, oh my God, because you're, you're, you're caught between two extremes there. And then your mind to seek, to seek equilibrium and consonants says, you know what, Red Bull tastes awfully good. And when I'm tired, it really gets me going. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it makes me focus and help me on target. Did you, ever, did you ever do that in your life? Yeah, I have. Okay. Did you ever create some dissonance in your head and then you, the, the consonants comes in and says, you know what, and it smooths it out. Okay. Now, I know I'm not telling tales out of school, but I know that, uh, like me, you have, a, you have a wonderful gift of procrastination. <laughs> I was actually thinking that when you were talking about so, dissonance. <laughs> talk, talk about that a little bit to me. So, I've talked to Jim many times about waiting to the last minute to do papers. So, in my mind, I, you know, I feel anxious because papers due in two days, but then I tell myself, you know what, I get it done. I get it done all the last times I've did it, mm -hmm. so I make myself feel better. Or I find other peers that have waited to the last minute as well. So I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I feel better that we're all we're all procrastinating. So your so your mind seeks some consonants, mm -hmm. or I can share this out of my own life. I used to tell myself that I work best under pressure. Yeah, I I do that too. <laughs> no, no one. That's and that, and no one works best under pressure. Okay, yeah. I can show you some papers that my teachers agreed with that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So the question is when we were originally talking about resolutions and intentions, okay? So when we set the resolutions, we're setting ourselves up possibly for disappointment, possibly for failure, okay? And then we then what we do is we get into the guilt and shame. So with the intentions and when we start uh, we start understanding the dissonance and understanding the consonants, then then we have a better, little better better understanding of our mind. So how do we do that? How do we do that? What we do, we do that by understanding when our thinker is becoming dysregulated. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we step back, we attempt through mindfulness, and mindfulness is nothing more than paying attention on purpose. We step back and we be the observer behind this thinker. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we 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 can use make some wise mind choices. Then, mm -hmm. so you've seen that come into play quite often in what we do. Do you not? Yes. Quite often what we do is why we try to create, when somebody has a poor behavior and they're trying to change it but they have all types of excuses, what we do is we attempt to create cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. So maybe by saying what's good about this or what's not so good about this. Uh, and I know that through your artwork, uh, you've, learned to, you've learned to help people recognize that. Can you talk a little bit about uh, your artwork to us and what... Uh, Let's say when someone comes to you and they, they say, I want to lose 150 pounds, I feel terrible about myself, uh, I, I need to change all of these things. Uh, so how would you start off with somebody like that? I don't know. Uh, I really, I come from a strength-based approach, so I would really look at, you know, what's the positives about you, like kind of getting behind the kind of mindset of that you need to lose weight, so kind of stepping back and I guess taking a step back and paying attention to like what is working for you so that could either be done I find that whenever you visually put something down you're able to kind of take a step back because you can say a lot of things but when it's written down and it's in front of you mm -hmm. you have it there to look at so what you're telling me is that when you do these when you let's say you want to lose a hundred pounds then you're you're dealing from a point of weakness I'm, I'm weak I'm way, I'm way overweight uh, what, what you're talking about is uh, getting together your strengths, talents, and abilities mm -hmm. to deal with the weight issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rather than what what they can't do, you talk about what they can do, mm -hmm. and you bring that out through art. And I've seen you do it. It's very nice, very wonderful, very wonderful. So what we try to do today is when you when you make those New Year's resolutions, uh, rather than setting yourself up for possible failure or disappointment, perhaps we want perhaps we want to set intentions. If you have a determination to change your life in a positive way, then set it up into small achievable goals. So small. If you want to lose a hundred pounds, then an intention would be perhaps buy a gym membership. An intention would be to drink a glass of water with every meal. An intention would be not to keep ice cream in the refrigerator, would it not? Mm -hmm. And the other intention would be to come and see Ashley and have her straighten <laughs> up. So 
we hope that uh, you have a wonderful and prosperous new year, that you do spend some time in uh, self-evaluation, perhaps reflecting on uh, the good times and making a list, a good inventory of your strengths, talents, and abilities to deal with uh, life as it is in this moment. So where are you at, Miss Ashley? Right here. And what time is it? Right now. And right now, right now we're going to close this, this evening. So we'll give you a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask that you can fish with not bait. So until then, we ask everyone to do a kindness for another.